pleasant good morning to my family in Christ. Thanking you for being on this spot of ground at this time. Thank you for taking the time off to spend with me this morning to give God honor and glory for his mighty work that he has placed upon us. This morning, I want to thank Bishop John for the obedience in his spirit to serve God with a broken and contrived heart. For God is mighty to save and strong to deliver. And where he lead us, we will follow. I know that God is real. And where he lead us, we will follow. So this morning, family in Christ, I want to bow in prayer early. Early, I want to ask God guidance and direction to walk this walk this morning. I am looking at the flood. I'm looking at the storm that, that has, you know, having all these people away from their home, destroy. People don't have anywhere to live. Man cry out, crying out. Fire burning down the places. This pandemic taking over. I keep asking myself, well, what is really going on right now? Because this virus is raging in some cities. And then this flood come. Then in certain parts of, uh, uh, you know, they have um, fire burning. Houses, people don't have anywhere, so they have to congregate. So what is taking place? What is man to do? How do they work with it? Because they have no house to live in. They have nowhere to go. You know, you hear that they're putting them in schools and in centers. And, and they have to provide beds. And some of these people are sickly. So they're all coming together in one place. So you don't know who is sick. You don't know who is not sick. So then what is taking place? So this morning I want to ask the Almighty God to give us some direction. Because we don't know. At least I don't know. What is the rightest word to say to someone in that situation at this time? So I pray that we all come together at this time and ask God for guidance and strength to keep moving on. Because some people is getting very depressed. I was listening to in the news and some people don't know what to do. Some people are taking their own lives. Some people are, are just falling apart. So this morning, family, let's call upon the divine power of God to guide us and direct us. Heavenly Father, this morning, I, your servant, come before thee, O God, weak and insufficient. I come, Lord, on behalf of the world, O God. I come on behalf of America, land at this time, Jesus. I come on behalf, Lord, as my brothers and sisters, O God, those, Lord, that are sick and afflicted. I come on behalf, O Lord, of those that lost their houses, Jesus. Those that have nowhere to go. Those are lying on cuts in centers, Jesus. Those that have no food, no clothes. Some that don't know where to go from here. And I pray, oh God, Lord, that you intervene. Send help where those seem to be none. Holy and adorable God, creator of mankind. Dear God, 
You promise that you will not see us. The righteous forsaken or the seed beg bread. Father, Lord, send help for us, O oh God, where those seem to be none. Be our guardian, our guide, and hold us lest we fall. Father, Lord, you are the reader of our heart and you are the search of our minds. Take a peep on cinnamon here below. Grant us faith and courage. Grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, O oh God. Father, send help where those seem to be none. Look down upon your children, O oh God. Father, Lord, you have created us and fashioned us for your own, for your sake, that we may be able to serve you in spirit and in truth. I pray, O oh God, you send help, Lord. Look at these people, Jesus. Father, when I look at them, Lord, I look at them in the flood. Look at the children, dear God. I look at this. So water is flowing from where we don't know where it's coming from. Disease is floating in this water. I beg you, oh God, Lord, God, Master, Lord, at this time, what can I tell thee that thou knowest not? I don't know the rightest word to utter, but I'm begging for mercy, I'm begging for guidance, I'm begging for strength, I'm begging for understanding. I beg you, oh God, to reveal your mystery. Jesus, you meek and gentle son, Lord of God, most high. Pity loving Savior, hear your children cry. I beg in you, oh God, help them to be obedient to your word. Master, what is going on? We don't know the rightest word of God. But remember them, Lord, as you remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Remember them, oh God, as you remember Daniel and the lion's den. Send help, oh God, and send those that are willing to help. Master, reveal unto them your mystery, oh God. Pastor, in the hospital, Jesus, remember this virus at this time, Lord. Help them, oh God, Lord, to, to create a vaccine at this time, Lord, that will be helpful to us. This morning, oh God, I teach a mother, come, oh God, weak and insufficient. I come, Lord, with my arms outstretched before thee. I come to tell you how my sin arrive and what trouble I do sustain. I come asking you, Lord, to put the righteous word into my mouth, Lord, that I may be able to speak unto cinnamon, Lord, that they may cry out, I heal, I heal, I cannot hold out any longer. For, Lord, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Remember the Ark of the Covenant and its members. Father, Lord, some are weak and some are sad. Some lost the love they had. Some never learned to love the well. This morning, some are dying at this time. But I beg you, oh God, Lord, to reveal unto them the mysteries and medicine to stop their complain. Father, Lord, don't deal with us as we deserve, but pardon us, oh God. Father, Lord, remember our place of labor. Oh God, Jesus, Lord, remember our raiment and shelter, our bread basket and water pitcher. Remember our home, the companions of our lives. Father, send help where thou seem to be none. Teach us what we must do and say. Help us to walk this walk, Lord, with filly and fear and loving gratitude. I'm begging you to send help, Lord, for we need a friend. Lord, we need a friend to suit and pity. Lord, we need a friend to care. My God and King this evening, oh God, take charge. Remember the offspring of our body. Lord God, remember these children, Jesus. Keep them, Lord God, as you want them to be. Teach them to read and understand. Plant the word on the table of their heart. Be the guardian and the guide, Lord. Remember every church and chapel. Oh God, every ministering staff. Father, Lord, all these churches that are closing, Lord God, God of Israel at this time, Jesus, help them, oh God, to know you better. Master, Lord, send help, Lord. Jesus, thou son of God, remember them, Lord. Father, Lord, for thou art the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by thee. Help us, oh God, to lean not unto our own understanding, but help us, oh God, to bow, Lord. Help us to be mindful of, our, of the word that comes out of our mouth. Help us to be forgiven servants, Lord. 
My God and King, this evening, teach us, Lord, what we must do and say. Father, I call in here this evening, help us not to be silent. Help us to stretch a hand where we need it. Help us to build each other in faith. My God and King, hear our call this morning, Jesus. God, I depend upon you, Lord, to guide me and direct me. Remember all those that listen to the song of my voice. Lord, meet them more than half the way. Lord Jesus, you know that you know what's going on with them at this time. Help them to have a conversation with you. Help them, Lord God Jesus, to able to have that conversation with you. Help them, Lord, to speak to you, Lord. Jesus, Lord, son of a David, remember them, Lord. Some going down the road like unthinking us to battle. Some people cannot even pray. Some don't know what to say at this time. My God, and King. Remember Bishop Ashby in mercy. Remember the thanksgiving, Lord. Remember the thanksgiver. Remember the family circle, Lord God. Father, at this time, I teach a mother, come, oh God, nothing, Lord, in my hands I bring, but simply to your cross I cling. Naked I come into thee for dress and helpless, Lord, we look into thee for grace. Father, about to enter into the fasting room once more. I beg you, oh God, Lord, to grant me the right seal and number. Oh God, remember those, oh God, that are about to enter. Prepare them, Jesus, if thou be so pleased. Again, Lord, I'm knocking at the door. I'm knocking, Lord, may I enter, may I enter, Jesus. Father, prepare us, oh God, if thou be so pleased. My God and King, what can I tell thee, Lord, that thou knowest not? Father, I'm knocking, Lord God, you tell me, if I knock, the door shall be open. If I seek, I will find. You said, I have not because I ask not. Father, Lord, I bow in my heart towards my knees this morning, not for a fancy conversation, Lord. But I come in, Lord, so weak and insufficient. I don't even know the right word to say. But all I want to ask you, oh God, Lord, to forgive us for wrong. Help us, Lord, to serve you with filly and fear and love and gratitude. Remember us, Lord, as you remember David. Wash us, Lord, and make us clean. Plant us by the river that we may keep fresh and green. That when any hungry soul pass by, we may get something to feed upon. Help us, Lord, to understand each other. Help us, Lord, to have compassion for each other, Jesus. Help us not to be rough with those that cannot help themselves. Remember Sister Bellamy at this time, oh God. Give her that strength and courage, Lord, that she may be able to deal with those that cannot help themselves. Give her a heart of love and peace at this time, Lord, that she calling upon you for, Lord. Remember this people that is all stressed out, oh God. Father, not for a fancy conversation at this time, Lord, but I come to tell you, Lord, just what lies in our heart. The things, Lord, that controls the mind. Remember those that are going through a hard time, Lord, they don't even know how to cope. Those of us, Lord, that are able to call you, Lord, help us, Lord, to do it in spirit and in truth. Teach us what we must do and say. Help us to fight this fight with all our might. Those of us that are in the house, Lord, want to get out and we can't. Those of us that fear take over. Those of us that are mentally sick. May Jesus remember us. I'm bringing Amanda before your God at this time. Jesus, Father, she's begging you for our healing. 
Lord, look at the state and condition of the woman. Remember the companion and the offspring of the body. Oh God, Lord, Father, Lord, I'm not questioning you, Lord, but I'm begging you for mercy. I'm begging you, oh God, to hold your hand. I'm begging you, oh God, Jesus, have mercy, oh God. Father, remember Mother and Maria the same. Oh God, Jesus, remember the woman's servant. Remember the woman's servant, oh God, Jesus, please remember the woman's servant. Oh God, touch her from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. I beg you, oh God, Lord Jesus, send medicine to suit the complain. Thou son of a David, remember us, oh God, we come like the woman with the issue of blood. We said, Lord, if you only touch the hem of the garment, we shall be made whole. Father, I too, Lord, I only want to touch. Father, just speak the word, Lord, and we all shall be healed only by the word, Lord. Only by your stripe we are healed. This morning, Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you come as a mighty rushing wind. I pray, oh God, that you blow your breeze upon us, oh God. Father, Lord, it's like all things gone mad around us, blessed Father. Father, all the doors are closed. Man don't know what to do. Man don't know where to go. If it is not the virus, Lord, it's fire. If it is not fire, it's water. Dear God, you promised us, Lord, that you would not destroy this land by fire. But, oh God, Jesus, look at the water, Lord. Look at the virus that is taking over. Father, man don't know what to do. Fear is taking over, Jesus. But I'm begging you, oh God, to keep us strong. Keep our minds upon you, oh God. Keep our ways, keep our tongue. Put the right word, oh God, that we may be able to speak. Remember my brothers and sisters, oh God, Lord, in Trinidad land. Father, Lord, I'm bringing them before you. Lord, they're going down the road like a thinking horse to battle. They are all scared. They and all don't know what to do. But I'm begging you, God, Lord, cover them under your own almighty wings. I am not there, Lord. We are all separated all over the world this morning. Oh, God, look at Keisha, Jesus. I ask in your this time, Lord Jesus, cover her under your own almighty wings. Teach her to pray, Father. Teach her to pray. Father, you said your word is sufficient to keep us. <laughs> I'm begging your God at this time, my oh Lord. Put your blood stained ban on the door. Put your force feel around us. Help us to know you better. This is the time, Lord, that we need you, and we need you more than ever. Father, we need a guiding word. I pray, God, that you send us armor bearers, faithful one, Jesus. Those that love you. Those that want to serve, blessed Jesus. Grant us that, that strength and keep us ever faithful, Lord. Those that you, that you are needed to lead your people, the shepherd, Lord, that you are anointed to lead your people, Lord. Grant them a fresh supply of anointing, Lord. Grant them courage to endure. Show their foot for that journey, oh God, and help them to run the race with patience. Father, Lord, may I step, Lord? <laughs> I beg you for mercy. I beg you for strength. And I am begging you for courage. And I pray, oh God, that are standing on truth. 
I pray, oh God, that I stand in not on my truth, but your truth. And I beg, oh God, that help me to do the things that is lawful and right. If there is ego in me, oh God, I beg you, oh God, clean me up, Lord. But help me to be strong. Help me that I will not fade, by the way. But I will be able to help those that need the help, Lord. Dear Jesus, in thy name, cover us, Lord, cover us. Remember, Bishop John is about to bring the word. Remember the members of Mount Hope Pilgrim. Remember those that support him night and day. Remember his armor bearers, Jesus. Cover them under your blood. Help them to be loyal, God. Father, because in this line of work, we need loyalty. We need loyal members. We need armor bearers, Father. Keep us ever under your own almighty wings. Help us to do your work in spirit and in truth. All those that are learning a helping hand this morning, oh God, remember them. Father, not coming for. Father, this is not about. This is not a fantasy, oh God, but I'm begging you, Lord, to strengthen us. I'm depending upon you, Lord. Strengthen my knees that I may be able to walk. I'm begging you for healing from my body, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I'm begging you to touch my hip, Lord, that I may be able to walk. Father, sometimes the pain is so tedious. Good news, God. And you promised me. And I'm holding on to that promise until you bless my witness. For I have nowhere else to go. I have no one else to call. Sometimes I feel so alone. But I thank you for courage. I thank you for strength. I thank you for endurance. I thank you for hope. I thank you for long suffering. Help me, Lord, that I may be to help others. Help me not to be selfish. And I thank you for choosing me. And I thank you for choosing others. Morning, Father, touch my heart, change my ways. This morning, Lord, pass by those Lord who lose their home, who losing their family, who losing everything that they work for. This morning, pass by. Put peace in people's hearts. Father, thank you for life. And I pray, oh God, that it will continue to bless man. Churches and chapel, hospital, nurses, doctors, all those that lending an honest and a helping hand with their whole heart. Those that giving of themselves. This morning, oh God, I bless you, Lord. 
And I pray, oh God, that you will continue, Jesus, to grant us and to deliver us. You said what? I bound the note of God, you can bound in heaven. Remember, oh Lord, that I'm about to touch, Lord, that I teach a man about to touch in your name. I pray, oh God, Lord, you bless it. And remember all those my duty bound to pray for. May you grant them strength and courage. This I ask in one name, but in Jesus' almighty name. I would lift up my eyes out to the hills of his God in my head. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keep it, he will not slumber. The only that keep it, Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is I shaped upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forever. And I thank you and I thank you again. And I pray, God, that you will continue to bless us all. Family in Christ, peace. I want to continue speaking to you about this word that God in my heart, I'm a bearer. Because I realize to myself this word, I'm a bearer, and I keep reading about it. And I remember in Saul, and I'm also looking at the job of an of Amabira. And our Amabira have to be. Someone that devote their life to serve God. You see, when we talk about I'm a bearer, most of the time people feel that it's a conversation that I had with a couple of people. Why should I give up my life for someone else? But you're not giving up your life for someone else. You're serving God. I'm a bearer must be a faithful servant to God. I'm a bearer must be a person that is willing to do the will of God without filly and fear, but with love and gratitude. I'm a bearer must be a person with love. I'm a bearer must be a person that is anointed. And I also understand that I'm a bearer is a God-given gift. It's a duty. Amalek. I was reading about Amalek. And I was reading about how Amalek, you know, he wanted to go and destroy this place because he couldn't get what he wanted. And as he I was reading as Amalek set in the field to go and burn down the place because he didn't like what was going on. The woman stood from on top. On top of the house and she dropped the stone on the head. When he feel it, he call the Amabira. You have to be careful in the Amabira. You have to. He asked the Amabira to kill the woman. But the Amabira was an honest and God-chosen Amabira. And the Amabira refused to do the job. You see, an Amabira must be a loyal servant of God. It mustn't be biased. It mustn't be hypocrite. An Amabira must be a chosen disciple of God. So your armor bearer must have a relationship with God. They must have a relation, a good relationship with their spouse. They must have a good relationship with God. They must have a good relationship with their children. They must have 
a good relationship on the job. And the armor bearer must be devoted. And if that armor bearer cannot function in the body of Christ, then you have a problem. You see many a times those that standing with us and claiming to be our armor bearer, you're right, and they do not have a good relation with the body of Christ, we have a problem. Because it's not an individual thing. An armor bearer is not a selfish person. And today, within our, we're talking about church, and, and our surrounding, we're meeting up with a lot of selfish people. It's about I and I and I and I. I and this and I and that. Unless it's your family, then you're ready like Freddie. If it's your daughter, if it's your son, if it's, oh, you're ready like Freddie. But if it is not that, then you have a problem. Brethren, we have to think. When we become a child of God, or when we are engrafted to be a part of the of the body of Christ, we have to make sure that we're ready to serve. And we cannot choose who we serve. And what I am looking at from where I am sitting, we have to break down and come again. Remember when Jesus walked into the building and he saw them gambling in the house of God and he said, that's how we're going to have to break it down and build it in three days. This is what we have to do. Because what I had in mind in growing up as a child and seeing or what I have seen and what I am seeing now is two different things. What I am seeing now, what we call church and serving God, is two different things. See, we are not serving God. I am not seeing Christ-like. I am not seeing love. I am not seeing I'm a bearer, I'm seeing selfishness. And those of us who have a desire to serve, we are being taken advantage of by those who are on the other side. It's just like if you go to work and they have people who are work. I'm talking about the corporate sector. And I'm listening on both sides. And I would hear from those that work in, in the corporate world. You would hear, well, you know, you go to work and have some of the, some that will just sit down there on the computer and they're watching this and that and they would not be working. And you would have those who will be working. I have those that will put in three hours and they will, you know, they go, into, they go, they go to the stores and they go doing what they're doing and this and that. They're not serving, they're not doing the work, but they want the same pay. And they will be arguing, but they want the same pay. Those same people is in the house of God, you know. Don't you think that they're doing anything different in the house of God? They're doing the same thing. Hence the reason, you know, I always said charity begins at home and it ends abroad. The same thing you're doing out there is the same thing you're bringing in the house of God. Nothing different. If the president of the company and they have the vice president, if you get in the meeting most time, if they don't choose well, sometimes the vice not doing any work. Or sometimes the president leaving all the work for the vice to do. It depends. I hear it over and over all the time. I hear it about the police force. I hear it about, you know, 
lawyers, I hear it about nurses, I hear it all over. From the same broadcast that is happening here, I get calls all the time. So sometimes, family, when you're here, I don't speak in here. It's not about these people calling me and telling me what's going on. Because sometimes I may touch something. And I am saying, brethren, in the house of God, we hear charity begins at home and it ends abroad. The same thing you're doing there is the same thing you're bringing to the house of God. No loyalty. But we forget that there is a silent listener to every conversation and there's on Sinai that seem all things. You want to be paid by God. You want to enter into the promise, but you do not want to work for God. You do not have no loyalty with God. There is no love. You serving under the pastor, but you're bad talking the pastor. You're serving unto the pastors, and you want to say you're an armor bearer, but you're stabbing the pastor in the back. How could you be an armor bearer? How? You're serving under the pastors, armor bearer, but you're disrespecting the pastor in the congregation. How could you be an armor bearer? You're serving under the pastor and you're being there, but you're disrespecting the members of the church. Same thing when you're doing in corporate. This is why I'm saying, brethren, we got to break it down and we got to build it up. Many a times, brethren, we do not want to break up because we fear. You know, it's different type of fear, you know, it's negative fear and positive fear, you know. When the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, then it have a fear again that you're fear. You're so frightened, you're doing nothing like the man with the talent. You're so frightened, you're burying it and you're still waiting for somebody to something. Come on. If we apply ourselves, the Lord is going to help. And we have to consciously know, everyone know when something is right and when it's wrong. We all know. Where I'm sitting down to a child, a little child, I deal with children. I love children. I am a lover of children. Don't matter where I go, and a little child see me start to smile. When my, and a little child know. From the time I look at that child, that child know whether to stand, sit down, or move. I don't have to say one word. And children love discipline. From the time you discipline a child, the child know what to do, when to do, and what not to do. I would walk in a child, a child know what to do in front of me and what not to do in front of me. I don't have to say anything. I have nieces and nephews, and I will tell you something. I cannot tell you one day, one of them disrespect me. I will hear about anybody else. I cannot say that about them. I have spiritual children in the house of God. I could never tell nobody one of them. Little young children that grew up on me disrespect me one day. Never. I can't say that for the grown-ups. Not all of them, by the way. Brethren, I want to say this to you. All of us are armor bearers when they come into doing the work of God. We are all placed here to serve the true and living God. We are put here for God's purpose, not for our purpose. We are here to replenish the earth. We are here to do good. We are here to apply ourselves to build this world that God put us. In. We are here to build the body of Christ. We are here to serve. Many of us want to be served. We don't know, but we want to be served. Some of us are so lazy where we sit, we don't want to move. Some of us do not want to earn our keep. 
I am sent to you, my beloved brethren. Serving God is serving the people. Let's try to serve God people with a broken and contract heart. Let us try to do good. No, the Bible says, let us not be wary of good. You know, sometimes you look at the house of God and you watch good, and someone would come in and you would hear some say, and you would, you would look at them and you would say that, you know, some come in and they have, a, they have a desire to serve and they have a desire to go. And others will just sit down on them. Let us try to do God work and not our job. Let us study to show ourselves approved unto God. Each of us let us search ourselves. Many a times we get fed up hearing it. Someone asks me, don't you get fed up getting online? You get fed up doing this? You get fed up saying the same thing? No. Because what you don't want, somebody else wants. Today might be your day. It may not be the other person there, but every day belongs to God. And what you don't want today, somebody else wants. Let us try to find out what our weaknesses are. Know yourself, know what your weaknesses are, and try to beg God, beg God to help you. Where you're weak to make you strong. Find out what are the ingredients you need to build your strength, to build hope, to build unity. We have to live with each other. Look at no bread. When you don't want to deal with no bread, when you lock up in your house and you're going crazy, you want to get out. One of the things I want to say to my brethren, fast on the word, let us learn, brethren, those that are in the house of God, let us learn to have respect for the house of God. Let us learn to have respect for the, for the leadership of the house of God. And leadership, learn to have respect for the membership of the house of God. And let us practice what we preach. Let us be faithful. Let us be devoted. Let us be trustworthy. A lot of churches is going up. A lot of churches is falling down. Let us not to be rebellious. Let us all try to remember the body of Christ. My words is remember that we are placed in the position to serve God's people. And according to the job we do, we're going to get paid. Remember, it's a fivefold ministry. Do your job and let somebody else do their job. If you are the associate minister, learn your lesson and learn it well. Remember, you are not the pastor. You are just the associate. Stay in your lane. Remember, you are not the mother. You are the assistant. Stay in your lane. And if you are there to assist the pastor or the mother or the armor bearer for them, be loyal. Be obedient. Be devoted. Be faithful. Call a spade a spade. Have a good relationship with God. Because the Lord is going to speak to you. 
I, I have great experience in those areas. As about being appointed, I remember having good karma beers, having to point Mona and, and not me. God speak to, he's speaking to me, I'm a beer and she bringing Mona to point. She don't know Mona to point, but she could come to tell me what I have to do. And it's right on the money. I thank God for it. I thank God that I listened. And I didn't feel that I was all that in a bag of chip. But I listened to the people that got clamped next to me. Today I could still stand. So my words to, the, to those that are listening, remember it's not all about us. But remember it takes the body of Christ to be able to lead God's people. So family in Christ, I thank you for your listening here. And remember, this is my opinion. This is how I see. This is how I want to run God's house. This is what God chose me. This is what he puts in me. This is how, this is how I feel. This is how I feel in my heart. And this is not for you, don't take it. Today, my beloved brethren, I'm about to bring my brother to the house of God. It's about to bring the word today. My big brother, Bishop, is about to bring the word. I want to thank God for him. He has been a loyal brother to me. He has been a devoted brother to me. One of the things I want to say before I bring my big brother, I want to thank God for him. From the day God has placed him at my side, he has never left. And I thank God that he, you know, that he has taught me what loyalty means, what love means, what respect means, and what guidance means. So if I have to do this, I am a good teacher. Family in Christ, my brother, Bishop John. Congregation, Bishop John, congregation. God. Praises for what he has done. Thanking him today for my big sister. I just want to correct her in that uh, I'm her little brother. I cannot be higher than her because God has her in a position where he has placed her. And then I came after. So, you know, you have the firstborn and then you have the others that follow after becomes like little ones. So today I give her the praise and the glory and I thank God for her giving me this opportunity today that I can bring a word unto you. I thank for each and every member from Ark of the Covenant because when I'm there, I always feel at home. I also thank God for all who is listening today because uh, it says that we need each other. For all family and friends, uh, we know that there are many that stand by our teacher Marva's side. And when we come together, we come together as one happy family. So today we are not just Ark of the Covenant, but each and every one of us uh, we are here to prop our sister, give God the praise and the glory for choosing her as an angel of the house of God. Today, the, the lesson is coming from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I'll be reading from verse 19 unto verse 25. Hebrews the 10th chapter, verse 19, unto verse 25. And as you find it in your Bible, I just want to sing a song, a few words of it. My times are in thy hand, my God, I wish them dear. My life, my friend, man, man, my soul, I live in the day. Sorry about that. 
I time the wind I am whatever they may be please in open for that as Yes, our times are in God's hands. And if all is found, here begin it, the lesson from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, from the 19th verse. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, and uh, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us uh, through the veil that is uh, to say his flesh, and having an high priest uh, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart uh, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled uh, from an evil conscience uh, and our bodies washed uh, with pure water. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without uh, wagering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. Not uh, forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much uh, the more as ye say the day approaching. Here ended uh, the lesson taken from Hebrew, the 10th chapter, from verse 19 unto verse 25. May God add his richest blessings to these words. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. The lesson today, brethren, as we are going through a time, a time that the world has never gone through, a time that our faith is being put to the test, but through it all, I want you to know that Christ has went through much more for us. His death on the cross had made it possible for the believers to come into the presence of God at any time they desired. They don't have to go to the priest to offer sacrifice anymore. They can come boldly to the throne of grace and speak to God for themselves. This was made possible because Christ created, as verse 20 says, he created a new and a living way, the way of the cross. Mm -hmm. The new way represents the new covenant. We once had the old covenant where for sin sacrifice had to be made. We will carry an animal to the priest and he has to present it as a sacrifice for sin. But Christ has presented now a new and a living way where we can come to God ourselves. We can come and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Christ had made it possible because he had paid the price for sin. He gave us life and has given us this new way of worshiping. So we do not have to make animal sacrifice anymore. The new way was made possible. Because he died upon Calvary Cross and he was risen. And since he is alive, no, this way is a new and a living way. No more do we depend upon the dead animals 
but we put our trust in Christ, the one who is living. He is risen and he is living today. So he had made it possible for the forgiveness of our sins. Today, he says, uh, this way becomes a living way, a way to go to God. We may have a problem, we take it to God in prayer. Christ is our mediator. John the 14th chapter verse 6, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is our mediator. He is the one that go to God on our behalf. We don't have to depend on the high priest anymore. But we, believing that God hear and answer prayer, can go to God in prayer. Jesus is made head over the church on earth. He is God high priest. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the obedient son who gives up his life for us. Today, many of us are disobedient children in the sight of God. But Christ, we learn, was very obedient because he did what his father asked him to do. The question is today, who will do this for us? Is there someone in this world that will give his life for another? Some of us may meet, especially the females will meet someone, a guy, and he says, oh, I love you so much that I will give my life for you. Do you think? that he will really do that? No. Will our mother or our father <clears throat> give up their life for us? The answer is no. Will our daughter or our sons give up their life for us? The answer is no. Or maybe our brother or our sister. The answer is still no. How about uh, a husband or a wife, the one who professed that they love us so much? Brethren, I don't think so. Instead, uh, they will prefer to kill us uh, to get what they want. Christ did it for us uh, because uh, he loves us. The Father loved us uh, so when he asked his son to come and to die for Adam's fallen race, he quickly obeyed that call. How many of us will be obedient children to God? I want you to know in return for his life upon the cross, he asked us to love each other as he has loved us. Verse 22 says, Let us draw near with true heart in full assurance of our faith. The same faith that the prophets of old had. The same faith that our ancestors who has gone on before, they also had that same faith because they had made a way for us today, one song says, the faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy when e'er we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith. We will be true to thee till death. We have to be true, be truthful to God until death. Because sometimes we come in, brethren, and we come in with a desire.
to serve God. But along the way, brethren, we tend to lose faith. But the song says to be true in our faith until death. And if we are truthful until death, we will be rewarded because God is the rewarder and he truly will reward us. He said, with a true heart, one filled with joy. When we come, we must be joyful, not uh, persecuting one another, not thinking evil of one another, but with a pure heart. The scripture says, sons and daughters, give me your heart and I will give you a kingdom. Our bodies, the 22nd talk about our bodies being washed with pure water. He wants to make us pure just as he is pure. Remember when he desired to wash Peter's feet, Peter refused, but he says, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. This washing is to make us one of his, to unite us with him. He keeps his promise. God promise to be there for us. In times like these, as we are going through this time, brethren, we are going through a time that our faith will be put to the test. The song says, precious promise, God has driven to the weary passed by. On the way from earth to heaven, I will guide thee with mine eyes. Say, I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with mine eyes. On my way from earth to heaven, I will guide thee with mine eyes. Representing brethren his ascension from earth unto heaven. He says even in his going up, he is going to guide us. He will guide us brethren with his eyes. That promise that Christ has made, he is one that will keep his promise. Because it says that now our promise now to him, one some say our promise is our only plea with this I venture nigh, thou callest bird and soul to thee to save such a wretch as I. Will we keep that promise? Christ kept his. We also need to keep his promise. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. By the washing, he wants to remove all of our guilt and all of our doubts. He wants to eliminate the uncertainties that may be in our heart. He wants us to have the full assurance. The songwriter says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, ever salvation. We are seeking salvation today, brethren. He owns, uh, the hemiologist owns Jesus as his own. Today, will we own him as our own also? Today, what about you and I? Will we consider what we are doing in the sight of God, whether it is right or whether it is wrong? He said, love one another. Verse 24 says, love one another. And he speak about good works. He speak about to provoke love. By provoking love is a desire to love. Love also is being aroused by love. Jesus tells us to love one another as he has loved us. He says, greater love has no man than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. Who is going to lay down their life for the friends? 
is that you and I know we have to let our conscience be our guide. We are held together in the same hope that one day, brethren, we will be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That one day we will be able to walk hand in hand with Jesus. Let us have that hope, brethren, because it says our hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. It is built on the blood that was shed upon Calvary. Let us hold fast to our faith. We say we need to start believing our beliefs. We say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We need to stop doubting our doubt. Thomas was a doubtful man. But the one to tell you that Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 14 says, The blood of Christ purges the believer's conscience. We are to our conscience need purging also. Because sometimes we think of the carnal and not of the spiritual. One song says, My faith looks up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Oh, hear me when I pray. Take all my guilt away and let me from this day be holy thine. Are we desired to be holy in the house of God? Are we desired to serve him in the beauty of holiness? Or are we there for a purpose just to watch and see what others is doing and always be ready to say, to be a hearsay and a they say in the house of God? No, in the house of God is supposed to be a joy. We're supposed to know that the love in the house of God affects our congregation. When we truly have love, there is a joy in the house of God. And when we look at Acts 2, verse 41 to 47, when you get a chance to read it, it is an example of a church in love. Verse 25 went on to say that we must not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Today, brethren, many of us are forsaken the assembly. Many of us don't have time for God. Many of us don't make it possible that we can come together to serve God in the beauty of holiness. We need to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Sometimes we may have the opportunity in changing our job hours so that we can able to come to God, but no, we prefer to choose the hours when we're supposed to be in church and say, oh, I have to work and God will understand. God will understand. We always use that word, God will understand. But God knows your mind. When we decide now that we want to work and leave God behind, when we decide now that our job is more important than coming to church. I want you to know, brethren, when we are able to assemble together, it is important for believers to gather. By coming together, we are able to encourage each other. By coming together in worship, it is in the church. Whether it is in the church or whether it is on Zoom, or oh, whether it is in a conference call, the assembling of God's people together provide an opportunity for encouragement where we can encourage one another. We have an opportunity to strengthen each other. There is a joy when you can see each other. I remember teacher Mav was saying that, uh, oh, she's so much desired that we we be back in church where she can be able to look at the faces, where she can feel that joy. And so, brethren, them will be a joy when we are together. If we are at home, brethren, will that joy be in our heart? No. 
We want to see the expression on our faces. We want to able now to send out praises to Almighty God. And in doing so, brethren, it involves taking part in worshiping and having fellowship. The church is a body of believers. And by interacting in our life, we are able to get that spiritual food. If any among us is sick, when we come together, we will be able to receive spiritual food. If any among us can also receive medicine, you know, because uh, when we come together and we pray, you know, sometimes the Spirit of God speaks to us and we learn that such and such is sick uh, and uh, the Spirit might tell us what to tell them to do. By coming together in worship, we are able to, able to get these things. I want you to know by coming together in one body, when we are able to comfort one another, it says uh, when we have uh, that uh, Assembly, brethren, we able now to be as one body. Our prayers is able to send up as one. Our prayers become powerful, and we are able. A blessing will come down, and that blessing, he says, will fall on the just and on the unjust, brethren. Whether we gather in the church or on Zoom, or on a conference line, let us know that we are coming to God. To God, it says, be the glory for the great things he have done. You see, once upon a time, brethren, when the church may have been closed, we would not have had this opportunity that we have today. Today we can meet on Zoom. Today we can meet on a conference call. And sometimes, brethren, when we learn that there is someone who may be sick in bed and cannot be able to come out, but because we are on Zoom and so on, they are able to tune into a service. I know our spiritual mother, she cannot come out to church anymore. But since we are on this conference call, every time that we are on, she is one of the first persons to tune in. And she gave God the praise and the glory because it says, even though there may be a pandemic out there, even though we may not be in church, now we can bring church unto her. How many of us make use of this opportunity? I want you to know, to be patient. Have that faith that God is going to open a way. Knowing to yourself, ask yourself today, brethren, what can I do to strengthen our congregation? We can do it by letting us be true and faithful to all. Let us hold fast to that which is good. Let us not be a bench warmer within the church. But let us always have that desire to do something for the man Christ Jesus. When we are called upon, we must be ready and willing, brethren, to work for God. Because God has been good unto us. Brethren, we are not numbered among the dead, but we are upon the land of the living. And today, the living can glorify God. May God add its richest blessings to each and every one who are on the line today. And I thank you again for this opportunity in no other name, but in Jesus' almighty name. Teacher Mava. Praise God. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou hast the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me whiter than snow. Hail, I am holy, humble and free. Hallelujah, in the glory. Hallelujah, and hallelujah, in the glory. We pray for the dead. Hallelujah, in the glory, we pray for 
In the glory, hallelujah, amen. Praise, praise the Lord, God. my brother. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise family God. in Christ. All right, so the reference to our family in Christ, are we all here listening? To this? The reference here is from Hebrew, from the Hebrew, the 10th chapter, from the 19th, verse 25. Okay, so we have the 19th, we have Hebrew, the fourth. Chapter the 16th verse. And Ephesians, the second chapter, the 18th verse. And for the 20th, we have Hebrews 7, 24, 25. And John 14, 6. And the 22nd, we have Hebrew again, the 7th chapter, the 19th verse. And Ephesians, the 3rd chapter, the 12th verse. The 23rd verse, we have 1st Corinthians, 1st Corinthians. The first chapter, the ninth verse. The twenty fourth speaks for itself, and the twenty fifth chapter acts the second chapter, the forty second verse. And my family in Christ, that's the word. As the bishop says, serve God with your whole heart, your body, your soul, and your spirit. And remember, nobody does it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Nobody going and die for you. For you. Mm -hmm. No matter what they say, they're not going to die for you. Because everybody wants their life for themselves. Yes. Amen? Amen. So, so may God bless you, family. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean not on your own understanding. Remember to be a good armor bearer for God. What you put in is what you're going to receive. Remember, anything that you're going through is what you cause on your own self. Nobody can do it to you. You know, when we were growing up, we used to hear somebody do me this and say, mm -mm, we live in a time now that you are responsible for your own self. Because we are not giving God our whole heart, our body, our soul. Very few of us. There is people doing it, but very few. Because I just be looking at what man called a giving God. And what man giving God is dregs. So may God bless you, family. Have a blessed day. And um, serve God with your whole heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And remember, you're not fooling God. You're fooling yourself. The next thing I want to say to man, stop lying on God. And stop feeling that you're fooling man. You're not fooling man. Fathers think you're fooling God. Because God does send visions. God does send visions to man. Remember what the Bible says. He said, old man will dream dreams and young man does see vision. Isn't that what he said, Bishop John? Yes. yes Amen. That's so true. So be careful because I'm getting some visions, people calling you who are even no, mem no members and even no people. And man feel they're fooling God. So this evening, brethren, may God bless you, Bishop John. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Have a blessed Bishop. And we're going to meet again. Oh, 
Oh yes. On that great day, we shall meet. On that great and amen, we're going to meet. So have a blessed day. Thank you everyone again. Love you all. Love you too. All right.